Levertine, and today I'm going to share with you how to crochet a Hogwarts inspired scarf, particularly a Gryffindor inspired scarf. For this project you're going to need a red colored yarn as well as a yellow or gold colored yarn. But of course you can also use this tutorial to make other Hogwarts house scarves such as Slytherin, or Ravenclaw, or Hufflepuff. You just need the proper colors. But again today we are making one for Gryffindor so I have my red-ish colored yarn as well as my yellow yarn. Both are from the brand Red Heart and yes this one is not particularly red. This is called Berry and it has some pink hues to it. However, I feel like it is a good combination with the yellow and would look really cute as a Gryffindor scarf using these two together. But again, you can use whatever colors you'd like either to do a Gryffindor scarf, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, or if you don't want to make a Hogwarts scarf at all and you just want to make a regular multicolored scarf, you can also use this tutorial. Anywho, first step is to grab your red colored yarn or whatever colored yarn that's going to be your primary color and you're going to create a slip knot using that color and after you've created that slip knot you're going to chain a chain of 20 to 25. At least that's how thick I like my scarf to be but if you want your scarf to be thinner or thicker then just crochet more or less than 25 chains it's totally up to you for me i'm going to chain 25 and after you have completed your chain it should look something like this and now we're going to do something called the tunisian knit stitch and basically it's going to be a crochet stitch that looks like a knit stitch and I'm a big fan of it because I've actually always liked uh, the way that knitting stitches looked as opposed to crochet stitches when it comes to winter clothing like scarves and hats and sweaters. But I don't particularly like knitting. I do enjoy having a hook as opposed to two needles so uh, that's why I learned this stitch so I could have the best of both worlds. I could have my knit stitch but through crocheting. But anywho I'm going to start off my Tunisian knit stitch by going into uh, the first stitch of this row, yarning over, then going back through that stitch and keeping the loop on the hook. Then I'm going to go into my next stitch, yarn over, then go back through the stitch and keep the hook, I mean keep the loop on the hook. And then you're going to go into the next stitch, yarn over, back through the stitch, keep the loop on the hook. Through the stitch, yarn over, back through a stitch, keep the loop on the hook. And that's pretty much all you're going to do throughout the rest of the row. Making sure to not make your loops too tight because you're going to obviously have to go back through them. If they're too tight, it's going to be tough for you. Um, so make sure that they're fairly loose and that they're fairly even. So sometimes it's a little bit hard to do like sometimes you may want to make this um, loop really loose and then you go into the next one and then it's not as loose as that one and then you're gonna have a bunch of like loose and tight um, stitches you don't want that you want them to be fairly even and all equally loose so yeah I just make sure that the loops hug my hook and that they're not too loose and then they're not too tight and it works fairly well for me, so yeah. And um, I also need to uh, let you know that the beginning of the Tunisian knit stitch is so tedious and so annoying, at least for me. So if you find this part frustrating as well, don't worry, you're not alone. I find this super annoying, but as you um, build on it, it does get easier. So yes, this is the first row. Um, after you have changed your chain and you go through the first row, you're going to have a bunch of loops on your hook. And to go on to the second row, we're going to yarn over and go through two loops. Yarn over, 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 two loops, yarn over, two loops. And you 
just going to continue doing that throughout the entirety of the row until you reach the very end. And after you reach the very end, the project should look something like this. Like a bit of a gap in between and uh, uh, bits of yarn kind of sticking out. And these bits of yarn that are kind of sticking out is kind of important because you're going to need those for the next row. So for the next row, you're going to uh, stick your hook through the yarn that's sticking out, but then also go through the stitch, yarn over, back through the stitch, and then leave the loop on the hook. Then you're going to go to the next stitch where the bit of yarn is sticking out. And you're going to go through it, yarn over, then back through, and then leave the loop on the hook. And then you're going to just continue doing that throughout the rest of the row. So you're just going to find that bit of yarn that's sticking out. And then you're going to go through that stitch. And you're going to yarn over. And you're going to continue doing that throughout the rest of the row until you reach the very end. And once you reach the very end of the row, then you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to yarn over and go through two loops and continue yarning over and going through two loops at a time until you reach the end of that row. And granted, it is going to be curving in on you and that's another reason why the beginning of this stitch is so annoying. But after you get a few rows in, it doesn't bother you as much. So then your project should look something like this. And then you're just going to continue with that pattern. So you're going to go through the area that has the yarn sticking out. Go through that stitch and then yarn over and bring the yarn back through. Keeping the loop on the hook. So you're going to go through that stitch, yarn over. Then go back through that stitch and keep that loop on the hook. Go through that stitch, yarn over, back through, keep the loop on the hook. Then go through that stitch, yarn over, then go back through that stitch, keep the loop on the hook. It is a fairly simple and easy stitch to do, but again, it it does get a little bit difficult in the beginning because of all the rolling that the project does. Um, and then also, if you're not used to uh, keeping all these loops on the hook, um, it may even fall off the hook. So you gotta be careful with that. Always keep your thumb here and keep the loops bunched up. But yeah, that's pretty much all you have to do for this stitch. Fairly simple. So after you keep continuing with that pattern for a while, your project should look something like this. You can definitely now see the knit stitch I was talking to you about earlier. I love the way that it looks and the way that it feels and the way that it folds, especially for scarves. And uh, the only thing I don't like is the way it rolls up, but we're going to fix that in the end with a row of single crochet all across the scarf to kind of make the rolling stop, but you can also just iron it. But anyway, um, after you have completed a good chunk of rows with the red colored yarn, you're going to add your yellow or gold yarn. And the way that I do it is I just grab the next colored yarn and then I use it um, as I would the original yarn. So I just put it on my hook uh, when I need to. So I'm going to put the hook through the uh, stitch as I normally would if I were using this color in the first place. But I'm going to now add the yellow and then now I'm going to have a yellow loop on my hook. So I'm going to again go through the stitch and then use the yellow yarn and then go through the stitch, yarn over, still using the yellow yarn, through the stitch, yarn over, yellow yarn, oops, I accidentally got the end of the yarn and not the one that's attached to the yarn ball. Um, yeah, so through the stitch, yarn over, back through the stitch, through the stitch, yarn over, back through the stitch, yarn, eh. Through a stitch, yarn over, back through a stitch, through a stitch, yarn over, back through the stitch, and so on and so forth until I reach the end of the row. So I'm going to have a bunch of yellow uh, loops on my hook now. 
until I reach the end of the row and then once I do I'm going to go back on it the same way as I have been um, by going it through two loops at a time. Again, a very simple um, stitch to learn. It's just um, a little bit different than what you're probably used to since usually crochet stitches don't um, look like this, like with all these loops on your hook. But anywho, we're approaching the end here. So I'm just going to go into the last couple of stitches. Yeah. And that's what that looks like. And now I'm going to go back on it by yarning over, going through two stitches, 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 and so on and so forth. I know it gets really repetitive, so I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. And the reason we're adding this new color is because Gryffindor colors are both red and yellow. Well, not necessarily, but pretty much those colors. So um, we're going to make two rows of yellow after every block of red that we create. So this is going to be the pattern. So it's going to be a block of red and then yellow, just like a strip of yellow and then a strip of red again and then another strip of yellow and then a block of red again and then the pattern is going to repeat. So from here, we're actually not going to switch back to red just yet because this would be too thin of a line of yellow to barely even make a difference. So we're actually going to go ahead and make another row, like a full row of yellow. So we're going to go to the left here and then we're going to go back through all of these loops that we are creating. Um, and then we're going to add the red to make that split in between the two yellow stripes and then after we've made the two yellow stripes we're going to make another block of red so yeah I'm just going to go back over to the left here with all these loops on my hook and after I have reached the last stitch here, I am going to go through two loops, yarn over, 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 go through two loops. Ah, sometimes I only go through one loop and I need to make sure that I go through two loops, otherwise it messes up the entire thing. <laughs> So, make sure that you go through two loops at a time because it will mess up all of the stitches within that row if you only go through one or if you accidentally go through three. So yeah. Yay, so now that I've reached the end of the row, that's what that stripe looks like. Now we get to add the red back in to make that line that will separate the two um, yellow stripes. So I'm just going to go into the stitch, then yarn over, go back through the stitch, and create a red loop. And again, go through the stitch, yarn over, go back through the stitch, and leave that red loop on the hook. And continue doing that throughout the rest of the row. And similar to the yellow stripe that we just made, we're going to make a red stripe the exact same way by doing this twice. So this is going to be the first row of red that we're making on top of the yellow. And after I've reached the very end of the row here, then I'm going to start going through two loops at a time. Two loops. Two loops. Two loops. Two loops. Two loops. Two loops. Two. Two. two Yarn over through two, 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 and we are approaching the end here. And after we reach the end, I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like so far. That's a decent yellow stripe. 
If we only made one, it would have been very, very thin, but if you want really, really thin yellow stripes on your scarf, then just do it once, but I wanted to do it twice. So I'm also going to make another row of the red. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing and create the loops on my hook. And then once I reach the end, I'm going to go back on the project by going through two loops at a time. And now that I've completed the second row of red, I'm going to switch to yellow once again and create two rows with the yellow yarn again to get that second stripe. And that's how you create the two yellow stripes on your Gryffindor scarf or your Hogwarts scarf. And since I won't be using the yellow for a little bit, I decided to cut the yarn from the yarn ball. And now I'm going to add the red once again, similar to how we did before. I'm just going to use the new color for my new row and then just continue on with the pattern. So now that I've made my two stripes, I'm going to make my solid block of red once again. So the pattern is a block of the main color followed by a stripe of the second color, then another stripe of the main color, then a stripe of the second color, and then a block of the main color again and so on and so forth. And then after you've created another block, then you're going to add another stripe of the new color, then a stripe of the main color, then a, the stripe of the new color, and then another block, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I'll check in with you guys after I've done a couple of uh, new blocks. So after a few more rows, if you continue following the pattern, your project should look something like this. Again, it's going to be a chunk of red followed by a row of yellow, then a row of red again, another row of yellow, then a chunk of red followed by, I'm sorry, these are two rows of yellow and two rows of red and two rows of yellow, then a chunk of red and so on and so forth. And again, I'm just doing the exact same pattern. Whenever I go left, I'm going to be going into the stitch, yarning over then going back through the stitch and leaving the loops on the hook. And then when I go to my right, I'm going to be yarning over and then going through two loops at a time. And just continue with that pattern until you're happy with the length of your scarf. So many rows and many hours later, this is what the scarf looks like. I just repeated the same pattern over and over again. So um, I went with a chunk of red, then two rows of yellow, then two rows of red, then two rows of yellow, then a chunk of red, and then the yellow again. And it just continued with that pattern until I was happy with the length of the scarf. Now you could be completely done with the scarf here or you can add tassels. So I've already detached the yarn from the yarn ball and I'm going to seal it off by going into the very last loop and then grabbing the excess yarn and bringing it on my hook and then bringing it through the last loop and giving it a tug. Now again, I am going to make those little tassels on here as well, um, but that's optional. And if you do plan on adding tassels like me, I'm just going to use yellow yarn, um, but you can use the red yarn or you can use a combination of the yellow and red yarn. Um, I don't really have that much red yarn left, so that's why I'm only going to use yellow. But yeah, let's make the tassels now. I'm going to grab my yellow yarn and wrap it around my hand like this, rather loosely. Uh, this is usually the length I like my tassels to be, so it works out perfectly. But if you want it longer, then you just kind of make it like loop long loops like this. And after you've gathered a decent amount of yarn, like how thick you want your tassel to be, then you're going to grab a pair of scissors and cut one end of the loops. So again, this is just the loop. This is too long for me, but if you want really long tassels, then you could do that. But for me, I just like doing this because I know that I like the length of the tassels when I do this. So yeah, once I gathered enough uh, yarn that I think is a pretty thick tassel, then I'm going to grab my scissors and you're going to take one side of the loops and you're just going to cut it like so and you're left with like this, wait a minute, it's still attached to 
<laughs> sorry, make sure you also cut the string that's attached to the yarn ball. Um, and you're left with a bunch of strings of yarn and that's fine. So you're going to keep it in half like this. You're going to grab your scarf and figure out where you would like to attach the tassel. I would like to attach it, say, maybe like right here. No, maybe like right here, fairly close to the edge, but not at the edge. And you're going to grab like the middle of it, the, st the part that's still looped, and you're going to uh, try and put that all on your hook. Sometimes it'll fall off, but just make sure that you grab it again and you have it all through your hook. Luckily, that time I didn't have any issues. So now that it's all on my hook, I'm going to need some space, but then I'm going to grab the rest of the yarn. It's not going to fit on my hook, so I'm just going to go piece by piece and maybe even use my finger, actually, and loop it through the loop right here. Give it a tug, and you have a tassel. Woo! So you're just going to continue doing that all along the side of the scarf until you're happy with the way it looks. And yeah, that's pretty much how you attach tassels. So I'm just going to continue doing that the exact same way that I just showed you. So now that I have attached the tassels on both ends, I'm going to go ahead and pretty it up because as awesome as it looks on the front here, this is what it looks like on the back. <laughs> All the times I had to switch colors and detach the yarn from the yarn ball. So I'm going to trim it up and then we'll be completely done with the scarf. So cute. Again, I really love the way that this Tunisian knit stitch looks and feels and it's so perfect for a scarf, especially for this design. It just looks really, really cute. So that's why I chose to do it. And again, if you are looking to crochet something that looks like knit, then use the Tunisian knit stitch. It's so easy. I guess the only real um, obstacle you may face is if your hook is too short, then all your loops will fall off, depending on whatever project you're using. But my hook was long enough. I know it looks like it's bigger than my hook, but if you bunch up all the loops together, then you're totally fine and you make sure that none of the loops fall off of the hook, then you're good. But yeah, um, overall, it turned out really, really cute. And I hope you enjoyed this video, found it interesting, entertaining, or helpful. If you are a fan of crochet tutorials, I have so many of them on my channel, ranging from uh, beginner friendly. Those are going to be the older videos that I have on my channel. And then as you progress to the newer ones, I do go a little bit faster just because I've been uh, making crochet videos for years and years now. And it gets very repetitive, so I've gotten faster. But again, if you are a beginner either to crochet or to my channel, please go ahead and uh, first watch some of the more beginner-friendly uh, videos first, where you can get used to either crocheting or the way that I teach crochet, and uh, then move on to the newer ones and enjoy crocheting with those projects as well. Thank you so, so much again for watching. Please don't forget to get a big thumbs up before you go. And also don't forget to click that red subscribe button if you have not already. So I can see you next time. Bye. And have a magical day.